sample from one of the students. So, email. Where is email? Where is email? Yeah. Maybe. Where are you going? Oilers? Join. So, one. What company did you choose? Costco. Costco. So, can you come up here and write that on board so the other students can see? Yes. Wendy's company. Wendy's company. Okay, can you come up here and show us how did you calculate the cost of debt for them? Yes, okay, just write down and we'll try to see what you did. Okay, so I asked you to use the interest coverage ratio so I can see that you found the income and you found the interest payments. Okay? And you got you found the ratio, so the ratio was 3.8. The income is 3.8 times higher than the interest payment. Okay? So what does that mean? Did you check it in the table? So you use this table here and it was 3.8, so it was A minus. Is that the company is larger than 5 billion or, or smaller than 5 billion? So then you came here and you found a default spread of 1.A minus credit rating, 1.31%. Or in the book we also have this table. <sighs> right? Um, So on page 38, we also have that table and book. Okay, the risk-free rate. Why did you use this risk-free rate? Why did you use this risk-free rate? 3.5%. Where did you get that from? You did your calculation in 2013. What's the, the risk-free rate today? We looked at it in the last class. What's the risk-free rate today? That was in 2013, right? 
But what about today? Can you remember from the last class? Can anybody help me? What's the risk-free rate in the US? Hmm? Where do we find the risk-free rate for the US? Where do we, did anybody find the risk-free rate for the US? Somebody must have found it. What's the risk-free rate for the US? No, now, today. Yesterday, last week, these days, what's the risk-free rate? Hmm? How do we find the risk-free rate for the US? It's okay, you can sit down. How do we find the risk-free rate for the US? Hmm? What do we look for? What financial instrument tells us the risk-free rate for the US? The yield on what? The risk-free rate for the U.S. is the yield on what? The yield on Coca-Cola's bonds? No, no. What? How many years? Ten years. So everybody repeat. The yield on the U.S. 10-year bond. Everybody repeat. The yield on the U.S. 10-year bond. I can't hear you. The yield on the U.S. 10-year bond. What is that? What is that? Risk-free rate for what currency? The risk-free rate for what currency? US dollars. Too slow. Okay, we need to know that. That's very basic. Risk-free rate for the US dollars is the yield on the 10-year US government bond. Okay? Did anybody find out what that is? What is the yield on the US 10-year government bond today? Or yesterday, or last week? We found it in the class last week. What's the yield? <coughs> you should have found that for your homework. If you did a US company, you should have found the risk-free rate. What risk-free rate did you find? Did you write down? Did you write down 3.5? Hmm? Did everybody write down 3.5? No, oh, what number did you write down? Uh, I write uh, 3.5. Why did you write 3.5? Um, I found the... Uh, 1.74. that sounds right. Okay, why did you guys write 3.5? <coughs> My data is based on the 2009. You used the example from the PPT, 2009. Yes. But I asked you to find the risk free rate, the cost of debt for your company today, not in 2009. Okay? So we need to change this. That's not correct. Okay? The risk free rate now is 1.74%. Does that make a big difference? Or not a big difference? It makes a big difference. 1.7% difference in the cost of debt for our company. Okay? So then, you have your default spread, that's correct, so we just changed this, it should be 1.74. If you made that mistake, correct it now, okay? Plus the default spread. But well, I don't see why you use uh, 1.25. It was, anyway, it's close, it was 1.31, right? A minus was... 1.31 here. 10 year is the one we're worried about. Okay? So that if it's A minus, this should be 1.31. Unless you checked on the internet and it's different now, right? If you checked on the internet, that was okay. Did you check on the internet? Where did you get 1.25 from? 25 from internet. From the internet? Well then it might be more accurate. If it, if you checked on the internet, it's more accurate then, right? Okay, 1.74 plus 1.25 is going to be 3%, right? More or less. Okay, 2.99%. <coughs> then we have to calculate the after tax cost of debt. It's going to be minus 30%, it's going to be 2.1%. Okay? So, that's well done. Okay, just you made a small mistake, you used the old. Uh, 
you use the old <laughs> risk-free rate for the US. We need to use the current risk-free rate. Okay, we can see the big difference. If you use the old risk-free rate, total cost was 4%. If you use the current risk-free rate, current the total cost, after tax cost of debt is just 2%. Okay? So that's the cost after tax cost of debt for which company? The Wendy's company. Wendy's. Okay, does everybody know how to calculate the after tax cost of debt for the company? Using this is using the synthetic rating, right? Of course, you said your company is Wendy's. We can go to Google. We can check with the rating agencies, or we can just put in here Wendy's credit rating. Okay? Wendy's uh, is B1. Okay, so we can see here Moody's changes Wendy's outlook from neg to negative from stable. Okay? Corporate family rating is B1. Okay, so in the real life, you found your own synthetic rating, but you just used last year, right? Okay, we said for the synthetic rating, more accurate way, use the last five years. Last five years income, and last five years interest expense. Because just one year is not really enough data to make accurate synthetic rating. Okay? So if you use the last five years or ten years data and got the average, it takes more time, but it's more accurate. If you did that, you're going to probably going to get the credit rating closer to B1. Okay? So anyway, uh, this is a simpler way. Just Google the credit rating. You don't need to find a synthetic rating, right? But I just want you to practice finding the synthetic rating because you need to use the synthetic rating for a private company that doesn't, not you know, small company that doesn't have the credit rating like Wendy's. <coughs> so if, if we look at credit rating at B1. Then we go to the table, and then we, we're going to see B1 is down here, is uh, much lower, so it's going to be 5.65% is going to add on, okay? So why is there that difference? Because you used just last year to make the synthetic rate, instead of 10 years, okay? But anyway, the credit rating companies think about a lot of factors. Synthetic rating is quite simple. Credit rating company thinks about a lot of different factors, so it can be different. Synthetic rating can be different for other reasons too. So do you have any questions about that? Okay, then let's review the last class. We're going to look at some questions. The last class we talked about basically finding the risk-free rate. Uh, finding the risk-free rate for countries which don't use the US dollar, okay, and finding the cost of debt. So, uh, let's discuss the questions with our partner, okay? So this, we're going to use the book. So on the top of page 38, you can find the answer for question one. So you can look at the top of page 38. So, Maybe the second paragraph. So what information, this question is also in the questions, right? It's question number, this question is, <laughs> question number two, okay, in the questions, in your book. The end of the chapter, page <coughs> 43, question 2. Okay. Well, you can find the answer on page 38, the first two paragraphs.
Okay, so uh, John Ujin. Where is John Ujin? Yes. What's the answer? How do they? What information do rating agencies use? Song Song He. Yes. Same question. What information does the rating agency use when they're deciding how risky the firm is? You can find in the second paragraph on page 38. I would prefer if the students at the back of the class, there are chairs up here and here and over there, right? Because I can't hear you well if you sit at the very back, okay? So just generally I would prefer if you sit up closer to the front of the class rather than the back of the class, okay? Don't worry, I take a shower every day. I'm not that smelly, so it's okay to sit here, or here. Do you know the answer? Okay, can anybody tell me the answer? They can use the interest coverage ratio. What else? Debt to assets. assets, they have a lot of financial ratios they can use. What is the financial ratio telling us? What's the main point? Yes, is the firm able to meet the debt payment? Okay, is the firm making enough profit to pay back the interest and pay back the debt? Okay, that's what they're interested in. So they, have, they can find a lot of financial ratio, like the interest coverage ratio, debt to equity ratio, okay? current ratio, which is uh, just our current assets over our current liabilities, okay? <coughs> Those kind of ratios. Okay, discuss the question number two with your partner. What's the answer? Oh, it's a calculation. So we can find that equation on page 14, right, under foreign cash flows and risk-free rates. Page 14, there's the equation that we need. All of these equations, as you know, the book is an open book exam because we're going to be using these equations, okay? But if you don't do this in class, you're not going to know how to do it. Even though it's an open book exam, you're still not going to know how to get the answer or you're going to be too slow, right? So you have to practice now in the class. Find it, what's the right equation that I need to use. Where is it in the book? Underline the equation, right? If that question is on the exam, then you know how to get the answer, okay? But if you just sit there and do nothing now, then get to the exam, then you're going to be in trouble, okay? Do you understand the difference? So even if you make a mistake, the point is, if you try, then we're going to tell you the answer now in the class, okay? Then you're going to remember better. But if you don't try, then you don't 
listen much to the answer and you don't remember well, okay? So I don't mind if students make a mistake, but the point is they have to try. Do you understand? So discuss with your partner if you're not sure, maybe your partner knows the answer, or your team. In the test you can't discuss with your partner, but in the class you can discuss with your partner. Okay, so uh, <coughs> Kim Yu Jong, Kim Yu Jong here, not here. Kim Yu Yun Jong. Yes. What's the answer? Three percent. How did you get the answer? Five minus two, right? So we can see here on the middle of page 40, we get the foreign currency risk-free rate is the government bond rate minus default spread for that country. So when we're talking about foreign here, we're talking about not US, right? US we're talking about as the home country during this course, okay? So uh, most other countries, Maybe there's just a handful of other countries that we don't have default risk. The AA rated countries like Germany and Finland. Okay? But there are 200 countries in the world. So that means that 190 of them, we're going to have to use this equation. Okay? Uh, to find the risk free rate in their currency. Next question. Calculate the expected inflation in the US if the yield on the 10 year treasury is 1.9%. And the yield on the 10-year treasury inflation protected security is 0.4%. So we can find that one on the uh, equation, the next part of page 40, right just below, over the tips. We should understand what the tips are. Tips is basically the real interest rate, right? So tips rate is the real risk-free rate. So if you put that into the equation and you know the government bond rate, then you can find the expected inflation, okay? You know two things in the equation, you need to find one. So this is the market's idea of expected inflation in the US. What does the market think inflation will be in the US for the next 10 years? Treasury Inflation Protected Security is TIPS, T-I-P-S, we can see in the book, right And the equation on page 40, it's TIPS. That's the real interest rate in the world, okay? Want to find the real interest rate? Look at the 10-year TIPS. Okay, so Wang Jiagong, where's Wang Jiagong? Not here. Angelina? Yes, what's the answer? 1.5, yes. So we have this equation, the real risk-free rate is equal to the government bond rate minus expected inflation, right? So we just put, use the correct equation and we put in the different parts. So the real risk-free rate is TIPS. So TIPS is, is the real risk-free rate, so we have 0 0.4 is equals to the government bond rate is 1.9 minus inflation. Okay? So then we, we want to find inflation. Are you able to find inflation? Did you do that Suhak in school? Hmm? What should I do? I want to find inflation, so I have minus inflation on this side, alright, is equals to 
0 0.4 minus 1.9. So minus 1.5 is equals to minus inflation. Okay, so inflation is equals to 1.5. Okay. So now you know what markets expect inflation to be in the US, right? From today, for the next 10 years. But they may be wrong. That's just what markets think. The IMF will also give their forecast of inflation. Might be slightly different. Okay. Okay, number four, calculate the interest coverage ratio for company A. This is its data for the last five years. Its last five years, average earnings before interest and tax is 50 million. And average interest expense is 10 million. What is the interest coverage ratio? You're very quick to answer. Too easy? Huh? We can see uh, the interest coverage ratio equation. On page 40, in the middle of page 41, okay? Interest coverage ratio is simply added over interest expense, okay? So people were shouting the answer, they got excited because it was too easy. All right? 50 over 10 equals 5. Okay, so question 5. Calculate the after tax cost of debt, okay? Just like you did for your homework. In Chinese RMB, for a company, B, just the name of the company is B, okay? It's an industrial company. Giving the following information and using the information in your book on default spreads, which is on page uh, 33. Oh, maybe 43, did I make a mistake? Page 38, sorry. Okay, should say 38, not 33. So the marginal tax rate is 30%. The Chinese 10-year government bond risk rate is 8%. China 10-year government bond default spread is 2%. The company B rating is A. So if it has an A rating, look at the table on page 38 and find out what is the default spread. It's an industrial company. Okay, and then we should have enough information here to answer the question. we can see the equation we need, right? After tax cost of debt equals risk-free rate plus default spread. One multiplied by one minus the tax rate. Okay? So we need to find the risk-free rate for China, the default spread, the Chinese company. Point seven, right? And minus the tax rate. 
So what's this here? And then we can find our answer. So we looked at this slide here, we sent them for the Indian company, right? So the default spread in India includes country default spread plus company default spread, right? We can note that for the company. So this table is just for companies anywhere, right? And then we also have to add in the country default spread. So then uh, we need to check the answer. So uh, Hon, <coughs> Hon, not here. Here, yes. What's the answer? I haven't got the answer. You haven't got the answer. Does anybody have the answer? <coughs> Can anybody tell me an answer that they got? You need more time. Can I take another minute. Uh, for China, company on the table on page 38 here. Company is rated A. Yes, that's uh, 1.47. That's in basis points. So. Five point two two nine. Let's check and see. Okay. So first of all, we find the risk-free rate for China is going to be eight minus six. Sorry, eight minus the default spread for China is two. Okay. So six is going to be the risk-free rate for China. Does everybody understand? We already did that before. Okay. Then we have to add in, back in this, back again, the country default spread is 2, add back the 2, and add the default spread for the company, which you said was 1.47, is that correct? 10 year, A, yes, okay, so that's 8, 9.47, multiply by 0.7, because we have to allow for the tax benefit. Okay? <coughs> so what's this? 6.629. What was your mistake? You didn't add in the country yeah. country premium. Okay? So we took that away and then we added it in again. So we could have just at the start, we could have just done 8 plus 1.47. Okay? But we found the risk. You know, to follow the equation, we found the risk-free rate for China, and then we add in the default spread for the company. The default spread for the company includes the default spread for all companies at that rating, and also the default to some risk for the fact the company is in China. Okay? Do you have any question about that? The similar one you did for your homework? Okay, so then just vocabulary that. Like I said, yes? Do you have a question? 0.7. Tax rate is is, is uh, three. So one point minus 0 0.3. The tax rate is 30 percent. 30 percent is 0 0.3. One minus the tax rate gives me 70 percent. Okay. Why do I do that? Because I get some tax benefit. We talked about it in the week one or week two. The tax benefit of debt. Okay. How much tax benefit do I get? Okay. The tax benefit is 
uh, percentage. Tax benefit is 30% of the total amount. So when I pay my interest, the interest is deducted. How much interest am I paying? Right, 9.47%. But this money is deducted from my profits before I pay tax. Okay? Therefore, I get some benefit. Of 30, the tax is 30%. <coughs> so my benefit is 30% of this number. Okay? So what's the cost? The cost is going to be 70% of this number. Do you understand? So that's why we calculate the tax benefit when we're doing the cost of debt. Okay? So just today, and again, a couple of students just got up and walked to the back of the room during the class. Okay? So I prefer if you don't just walk around like that in class time. Okay? Yes? What? Because we have to add back in the country risk. If we look here, for the default spread, it's a Chinese company, so two things are included. We looked here for Tata Chemicals, which is in India. Risk-free rate, okay, plus country default spread. So the two is the country default spread for China. Okay? Only for countries with risk. The US doesn't have that. Okay? Germany doesn't have country default spread. Okay? Finland doesn't have country default spread. Korea has a small country default spread. Okay? China has... This is all percent, yes. 6%, 2%, 1.47%. Okay? If you want, you can also write it like this. 0 0.06 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.0147. Okay? But I don't want to write like that. It's easier to write like this. My answer is in percent. Okay? So my answer is going to be 6.629 or 0 0.0629. This is a percent. And this is a number. Okay? So you can do the calculation whatever way you want, as a percent or as a number. Okay? There's two decimal point difference between percent and number. Any more questions? No? Okay, then let's, uh, we need to practice the vocabulary a little bit. So we'll meet these words again, they're important words. So discuss with your partner, what are they? What do they mean? So you ask your partner, what is principal? And then they answer. And then they ask you, what, is, what does liquid mean? And you explain what liquid means. Okay? You can look in the dictionary or in the book, there's also some definition. For example, the reason I've added these words is if you read the book, if you look at principal, at the very start on page 36, we see here principle, and then in brackets, <coughs> I, I wrote in the definition of principle. Okay? So that's why it's useful to read the book after the class, or before the class is the best one, but after the class is okay too. Okay? Then you can read the book, you can look at the definition. So discuss with your partner what do the words mean?
can't hear you. What is it the difference between? Can anybody tell me? Spread means difference, but what is default spread? <laughs> Difference between the government bond rate, the US government bond rate, and somebody with risk of default, right? Like a company or a government with risk of default. So the difference between them. Okay, the interest coverage ratio, Trey Way John. There are the ratios, the debt ratio and profitability ratio that the rating agencies use to decide how risky a company is. But what is the interest coverage ratio? <coughs> That's interest payment. What's interest coverage ratio? Anybody? We just calculated the interest coverage ratio very quickly. It was somebody told me it was five. What is the interest coverage ratio? Interest expense. EBIT. Which is over which? EBIT is over interest expense. Okay. Uh, synthetic rating. Uh, Yang Sung Wan. What does synthetic rating mean? What does synthetic mean? What is synthetic grass? Don't know, you don't know? Anybody can anybody tell me what does what's a synthetic rating? <coughs> Not made by the rating agency. Okay? Just we make the rating ourselves. So synthetic means like not real. Okay, not authentic. Okay, like we already explained about the Injong in Korea, Injong Jandi, synthetic grass. It's not real grass. Okay, not authentic grass. So we make our own rating, not the proper rating, but it's useful for us, for the private company. Okay? So then, uh, let's finish there for today. So remember on Friday you need to hand in your uh, questions. So. Uh, not many students, just a couple of students have asked me questions about their, their work sheet. I was expecting more students to ask me questions. Okay, so if you have a question, if you're having a problem with your worksheet, then you can ask me the question at the end of the class or come to my office. Okay? So then, see you on Friday.